and discovered our quality talk shows. It's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, what is up, people? You're hanging out with Claude McKnight. I'm here live today from the studios here uh Sunset Gower, and uh, we've got a really, really great show for you. We've got Mr. Deke Sharon on the program today. He's going to call in uh, at about 10 minutes past the hour. I can't wait for that. Um, anyone who knows Deke, I don't, I don't really need to do an introduction about him, but anyone who doesn't know, he is basically the gentleman who is credited as being the father of contemporary a cappella music. Wow. This guy is deep. He's done a lot of stuff including the, uh, the sing-off TV show. He sung in and uh, produced many a cappella groups, uh, including Straight No Chaser, Committed, Nota, Street Corner Symphony, and a lot of other groups. And we're going to talk today about uh, the state of a cappella, music in general, what he's doing, um, where he comes from, all that kind of stuff, what he'd like to see happen as the father of contemporary a cappella music, which I guess makes me the grandfather of old-timey... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> acapella music, John, I don't know. I don't know. This would be very interesting to have this conversation because I've got uh, some things I'd like to ask him. It makes and, you a uh, pioneer. That's a pioneer. That's word. You know what, John? Anytime a legendary. I, I, that's right. There anytime I say something and I'm a little off base, John just <laughs> pipes right in and, and uh, does a great job. So I, I thank you, my friend. That makes you feel better. <laughs> that right? makes me feel better. <laughs> so very, very cool. He's going to call in, like I said, about 10 minutes past the hour, um, technology willing, and... Um, until then, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the week in uh, in in review. All That's right. what we're going to do. You know, last week I was uh, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and then I was down in Huntsville, Alabama, with my mom, yeah. who is not uh, going to be in the chat room today. She has a prior commitment because mom is mom is busy, uh-huh. busy dude. You know, she's probably getting a c- congressional medal or something <laughs> like that. With my mom, you just never know. So she was my co-host last week, I yeah. guess for the for the fourth time. Great. And we had a wonderful time. My brother Michael was in the house, and I gave him a shout out or three or four. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Mom, uh, she's doing well. That's great. Uh, those who have been following her uh, on social media, you know that she's come through mm-hmm. uh, chemotherapy and and the cancer situation, and she's cancer free as yeah. of this moment. So you know, I'm going to give her my own little hand clap here. Oh, applause. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> We love you, Mom, and um, so you, you get a pass. You don't have to be here on the show today because I got this. <laughs> I got this, Mom. Uh, she's actually hanging out with uh, Kenny Anderson, a good friend of mine and, and hers uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, who's had a, a radio show there for 25 years. He's, he's celebrating his anniversary of the Second Chance broadcast. So cool. anyone who's listening, uh, go to social media and look up Kenny Anderson. Mr. Anderson, <laughs> really good dude, and uh, he gets he gets things done, and um, so that's where my mom is today. So if you're looking for her in the chat room, you're gonna have to talk amongst yourselves, maybe even call in, because like I said, we have Mr. Deke Sharon on today, and um, so we've got a lot of really really cool stuff going on. But John, I got to tell you something, buddy. Yeah. So I posted this on my on my Facebook page, and I, I dare say that this post had the most responses of anything I've ever posted. Uh-oh. You want to know what it was about? <laughs> John, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, even if you don't ask. Uh. So I'm leaving Nashville, and it's like on a 9 p.m. flight uh, last, uh, what was it, Thursday, I think? Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday. Mm. So the airport is fairly, you know, you know, nothing's going on really. And so I get in. I'm taking my stuff out of my bag because the TSA line is closed. Mm -hmm. So I have to take out my computer and all of that stuff. I go through the security line, beep, 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 secondary screening. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. You know, it's happened every once in a while. Sometimes it's a random thing. Mm -hmm. So the guy, I'm going to tell you what he says, John. Never heard this before. This is why I posted it. He said he's checking me again because of a groin anomaly. Ooh. John, I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's why you got so many hits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, on any other day, you know, if he had said, you know, secondary screening because, 
there's something, you know, we need to check in your waistband or in your left leg or whatever like that. Whatever it is, I wouldn't have posted it. It wouldn't have been that deep. But a groin anomaly, John. You know, that's one of those things that, you know, I had to post because I've never heard that before. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. You know, there was something really cool sounding about it, even if it was weird. It's kind of like, you know, from Sex and the City when, you know, you have Mr. Big. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, wow. Or you have, you know. That's like uh, a... Yeah, just a kind of a double entendre kind of thing. Or uh, remember the movie A Boogie Nights? Uh-huh. And the last scene, or close to the last scene, where um, uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg comes out, and I'm sure he has this appendage on. Yeah. But they show this thing, and so you know, from now on, he's going to be associated with that. Yeah. So everyone, you can associate me with the groin anomaly. Did they? explain to you what they meant by that they did, did not explain they just i tell you what did an extra pat dude down? felt me up for about seven minutes wow <laughs> are you serious he sure did he sure did but you know the interesting thing was he told me everything that he was about to do and he said uh would you like to go behind a curtain or whatever i uh-huh. said no 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 let's just keep it out here <laughs> oh yeah that's funny <laughs> so yeah that was my that was my trip back, and I probably had a uh, hundred comments to this groin anomaly situation, and um, yeah, wow. pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So that was that. Uh, what else happened? You know, we had mom on groin anomaly. We've got Deke Sharon coming on. All of those things are mutually exclu- exclusive, I think, <laughs> <laughs> from each other. How was your week, John? I think we have a couple more minutes before Deke calls in yeah i've been on the mend so on the mend. Yeah, yeah you know i wasn't here for your show last sunday and then yeah 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 you <clears> yeah. just you know you don't like doing my show anymore. no it's not that just lately from i think it's been since friday not you want to explain to them what you told me about what yeah. probably happened well i've been i've been on a, a high dosage of probiotics mm-hmm. and what i understand is that with that comes fallout, which is die off of any bacteria or anything in your system. Because probiotics basically are supposed to level your system yes. so that you have good and bad bacteria mm-hmm. so that you have, you know, if you're having stomach issues or so forth, you can take probiotics to fix that problem. Well, the thing that, that I didn't understand that happens is that you can ha- get what's called die off. That's the, um, I guess, the common word for it, but there's, you know, a medical term for it. And but what, you're calling it die off. It, well, it is actually. Is it die off? Yeah, it really? is. Yeah, D I E, and then two words, O F F. So mm-hmm. die off. And what happens is the the toxins from the bacteria that's being killed off in your system um, floods your system. Sure. And then you develop cold and flu symptoms as a result of it. It's like a combination of those symptoms that you would have in a typical flu or cold, but it doesn't feel like a cold or flu. It feels something completely different. It's very weird. So kind of the classic you, um, <clears throat> As you can get hear, worse still, before you get better. Yeah, yeah. and you can hear it's. I, I'm still like not 100%, but it's not contagious, and it's something that, you know, is... is. Uh, I was going to say, because, you know, like in Japan and places, they'll, they'll wear, you know, a little mask in front. You don't mm-hmm. have a mask on, John. Mm-hmm. I mean... Am I going to leave here nothing and can, not, die off? Nothing contagious. But, okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's just weird. It's 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 congestion, and um, then there's headache, there's there's fever, there's chills. Mm-hmm. Um, those were my symptoms. So, um, and at one point, I thought, well, maybe I was getting it from something that was come, you know, something being transferred around the studio or whatever, because one of our engineers had it. Oh, but uh, now you tell me. But he told he said his <laughs> symptoms were different. So okay. So uh, I'm I'm guessing that's it was the it was the it was the die off. That's what I'm guessing that it is. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, because it doesn't feel like a, a typical cold or a flu, you know, and it it's. But you did say you're on the mend. Mm-hmm. I'm that's on, good. I'm on the mend. I'm Ladies here. and gentlemen, he's I'm on here. the mend. <laughs> very yeah, good. Yeah. Very very good. Cool. 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 So we've checked in with John. Mm. We've checked in with the groin anomaly. And that's crazy. We, you know, I, you know, I'm I to keep that saying up. that too. I looked that up, and that's a very interesting thing Uh-oh. because what does it say? Well, is it a good thing, John? This is going to be interesting to hear, Claude. Okay. Um, TSA is often flagging transgender Whoa. people for the groin anomaly. So this is a this is a well known thing, but not for. You know, cisgender men like you. So uh, cisgender means you know, born a man I, and stayed you know a man. I'm, 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 <laughs> so, I needed to hear. Yeah, I don't, I don't know these terms. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is, growing anomaly. That's 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 I. You know, if you do a Google search on it, that's what comes up. And the first thing is TSA flags transgender flyer. And there's uh, several reports about uh, that say routinely target 
transgender passengers for growing Well, up. this changes everything, So I'm John. just wondering if that guy wanted to fill you up, because that's just kind of weird that they would do that to you. Let's just say, John, I had a smile on my face when I got on the plane. <laughs> Well, there you go. All right. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, you know, we have fun here. Yeah, we have we fun do. here. That's fun. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you know what? I guess I should have I should have looked well, it up the myself. First, well, it's the first time I've ever heard of it. So there you go. I mean, the way he said it, I yeah. should have known that it was an actual term. You know, it's not something he made up or whatever. Right. So. I would have asked to speak to a supervisor. Wow. Yeah. Really? But th- then what? They could say, well, yeah. would they have asked me, are you transgender? I had just shaved my mustache and stuff <laughs> you off. You don't look anything transgender, I, so no, I don't know I'm where they are. I'm a really ugly that. woman. <laughs> <laughs> and bald, too. Uh, I don't have no Man. idea. Yeah. Oh, well. Man, and yeah. see, now I'm, I'm all week, I'm you know, stepping a little higher when I think this is a great thing. And yeah, Our listeners is, are listening and learning a lot tonight. They are. And That's what we're here for. <laughs> We are here to give information. And I hope they turn back their, their clocks because we're, what, an hour behind now? Two o'clock now? So what time would it have been? It would have been three o'clock right now, and we're two o'clock, so... Oh, I'm looking at this other clock right in front of me. It still says 310. Mm. <laughs> so you guys didn't so change this one. Oh, I've got Deke. Here we go. <laughs> oh, we've got him on the line. Yes, we do. Uh-oh. Is this working? I think yeah. you're saving us, Deke. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is that, De- is that Deke Sharon? <laughs> yeah. All right. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, I uh, can you see me? Is everything good? Yeah, we can. We can see you well. You know? John can see you. I can't see you. Claude, you know. Claude can't, but we can. I said that I, I didn't really want to see your ugly mug today, Deke. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably one of the best decisions you've ever made in your career of good decisions. Well, good to have you, man. I, I tried to set it up to where, um, I, for most people. There's no need for an introduction, but you know we've got a lot of people from all over the world, and some of them may not know that Deke Sharon is considered the father of contemporary acapella music. How did you get that title, Deke? I I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, Entertainment Weekly said it, so I mean, somebody yeah, in your camp you know, must have leaked the, that. <laughs> the first time that I ever saw it in print was in the book Pitch Perfect, the nonfiction book that um, followed the college acapella world, mm-hmm. and. Uh, And then it kind of spiraled out from there. And I don't know, I hear father or godfather all the time. The other guys in my band at the time, they they made a big joke out of it. So they'd call me like Padre and things like that. And (laughs) I've heard every permutation. Uh, But I mean, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes an army to build a cappella to what it's been now. And you guys, in Take Six, were absolutely pioneers and uh, (laughs) own some of the paternity for all of this. So... uh, but you know, yeah. Deke, so that, that makes together. me the that makes me probably the great grandfather or something. The great grand poobah. <laughs> the grand poobah. I love it. Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. That's I'm good happy enough. to be part of that lineage. Well, cool. Well, we're glad to have you. And I'm just going to jump into a few things here because I have your your bio in front of me, and obviously I, I've known you for a long time, and we got to hang out just a little bit in uh, Australia. I want to say was that two years ago now? Was that? Man, I'm not really sure how long It probably ago. was. Yeah, it was Tasmania, right? Tasmanian <laughs> devils and everything like that. That's right. That's right. Tasmania. That is right. So, so Deke, with the, the, the sing-off and, and all of these people you've produced and everything, uh, let's jump right into the fact that uh, Pentatonix had the number one album on the uh, Billboard 200 last week. Am I correct? Or this week? That is exactly correct. It, it, it counts as this week. It's still there and uh, for a few more days, and it's... It's a tremendous achievement within our acapella world because for the longest time, we've been trying to get more songs out there, get more groups launched, to get more music in people's uh, hands. But y- you don't know that you're necessarily going to make it to number one. Yes. And uh, this is the first time in history. It's huge. And that is very, very huge. And I talked about Pentatonix on my show uh, it was either last week or two weeks two ago. Weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just trying to drum up support for them and everything. And it's interesting because, yeah. you know, being an acapella guy and having been in this business now going on almost 30 years, the interesting thing from my standpoint is I don't consider Take Six necessarily to be uh, a part of this new movement of, of contemporary acapella singing. It's, it's a different world, you know, where I think a lot of these groups, and correct me if I'm wrong, kind of started out by doing uh, covers and doing songs that are um, on the pop charts and, and giving them their own acapella spin, so to speak. 
Yeah, but 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 I do like here. I'll pull you back into the fold. You you get to be uh you get to be in Godfather Three. You try to wrestle him and pull you back in. Because here's the thing: what we're looking at happening right now in acapella is the oldest music in the world. Yes. And when you talk about people singing current popular music, that's the same thing that happened 50 years ago, and they now call it doo-wop. 100 mm. years ago, and they now call it barbershop. You know, f- 500 years ago, and they now call it madrigals. What we're doing now is absolutely the same thing. Yes. The vocal techniques are a little different. The fact that we've woven beatboxing into it, and we use more layered sounds, and, and there's more, uh, like, the technical side of it hap- is a little different in recording. But the bottom line is we're all doing the same thing. And the fact of the matter is what you guys did in Take 6 was no less pioneering. You ended up taking gospel music, jazz harmonies, R&B stylings, like a, a real knowledge of musical styles from all around the world and blended it together to something that was powerful and unique and changed music history. And uh, that's exactly what all these groups are doing now at the same time. It's a mixture of different elements. Well, it's funny you would say all that because I, I've always known, and, and, and the data shows that musical styles come in and out of fashion probably every 20 years or so. You know, and our first album came out in 1988. And yep. for most mainstream people, it came out of nowhere. Even though we had been doing what we've been doing for a long time, we, you know, kind of rode on the shoulders of all of the other a cappella groups from our school and yep. people. We grew up listening to, to the Singers Unlimited, the High Lows, uh, even the Manhattan Transfer and, and groups of, of that, the Mills Brothers. And oh, yeah. so it wasn't like this was new, like you're saying, you know, yep. it's the same thing over and over. You just, you know, you, you build upon what it is that has been influential to you and you try to make it authentically your, your own. That's right. And you, you came up during a time when acapella was just again, beginning to get yes. a little bit of attention in the, in the major media, but it was it was non-acapella groups doing acapella songs. So you had your Huey Lewis in the News, It's All Right, mm. and you had you know Boyz II Men with a couple acapella tracks. Yes, there was Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yes, we had the Nylons in there, but uh, those radio singles didn't necessarily translate into huge swell in, um, in acapella growth the way that it, it has been happening now. Uh, it's the reverse, though, because now we've got the number one album, and Pentatonix is beginning to squeak onto the charts, but it's it's almost topsy turvy. Well, let me ask you: When did you see the tide starting to turn? And and obviously, um, even with the success of Pentatonix and Home Free and and a lot of the other groups, it's still a really hard thing to do, especially with the climate of the music business in general. And I'm not even talking about the acapella world specifically. I'm talking about the entire music industry. When did you see it starting to shift and change into a more accepting uh, uh, mainstream thing as far as acapella is concerned? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it's a little hard for me to answer because you remember that old Paul Malve commercial, you're soaking in it? Yes. Like, I've been soaking in it the whole time. I <laughs> uh, I was at high school. I loved acapella. I heard that Tuss Beals was come. At, in, in college, All I, I just tried to collect every acapella album I could find. In fact, I went in Tower Records one day and saw this new group, Take Six, and I was like, is this acapella? And I flipped it over and said, Gene Perling, this is a great, <laughs> oh, oh, Gene Perling likes it, I'll buy it. And I, so I was just a collector and a lover and a singer and when I graduated college, when I started the Contemporary Acapella Society of America, when I started the House Shacks, I, w- I was like Don Quixote. I-, I was tilting at windmills. I was like, I think what we're doing with our voices now is so powerful, so fresh, so unique, so wonderful. I, I, wanna- I want the whole world to know about it. I want everybody to have this wonderful experience that I've had. And so 20, 25 years ago, even then, even though there were a few tunes on the radio that were acapella, when you said the word acapella to people, they didn't know what it was. Or right. if they did, they would think it meant barbershop. They would mm-hmm. think it meant... Uh, classical choral music uh you know maybe church music um but the idea of all of these different styles and all this great stuff that's going on the word acapella didn't necessarily uh resonate with people and then the culture began to change mm. and the nccas that i started to create a march madness of acapella the the national championship of college acapella the n double ca uh became international in the iccas now we've got three thousand college acapella groups out there there were only 200 what happened is maybe 10 years ago, people started to know about acapella bubbling up to this college world, but it was a punchline. You saw it in Scrubs, and you saw it in The Office and Jennifer Aniston movies. It was like, oh, that's that thing that dorky Ivy League people do in college. 
But then Glee went on the air and mm-hmm. started to show that acapella could actually be like one of the best things about the show. And then with the sing-off, we were able to show people what was actually going on out there. And we were presenting barbershop, we were presenting doo-wop, we were presenting pop and jazz and rock and all these different styles of groups. And it was the highest rated new unscripted show on NBC the first year. And it was the number three show on NBC the following year. It, the success of the sing-off changed the game because it changed people's perception of what acapella could be. And then Pitch Perfect, this little indie movie. I didn't think anybody was going to see it. I was worried it was going direct to DVD uh, <laughs> because Gold Circle, this little movie uh, studio was making this movie. It took off and it became the, the cult sleeper hit. And then acapella was everywhere. And well, see, so, I have to stop you for a second, though. Yeah. I need to toot your own horn for a second. Uh, pitch Perfect? Come on, man. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. I love it. I mean, it was absolutely great. But, but why are you proud of it? Let everybody know why you're proud of it. Come on, man. You, well, you this, had, this, is, this is my world. This yeah. is, uh, I mean, like I said, there's this nonfiction book about mm-hmm. this college acapella world. This is what I've been trying to do my whole life is popularize this sure. kind of music. And uh, it's based around it's based around real groups and real events mm-hmm. and a real competition that I started. Yes. And then working on the movie, um, you know, part of the vocal team, vocal producer, and I'm one of the singers in the movie, and I've got a cameo in the second movie. Um, it's it's great to, ha- to actually have a seat at the table and sit right next to Elizabeth Banks and the other producers and mm. the director because they really care that this movie is true and honest to this world, our wonderful, geeky little world. <laughs> and as I said to Liz Banks, uh, first time we were sitting and talking together, I said, look, I know that this has to be a comedy. You have to make fun of acapella. Pull no punches. You are never going to insult me. But if at the end of the movie, people are not out of their seats cheering for acapella, being amazing, mm. wonderful, tremendous, then you don't have a movie either. So it was a great partnership. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, I've seen both of the movies and really great stuff, man. And uh, I understand there's a, a, a third part coming out, correct? Yeah, well, the the first movie was this uh, slow sleeper hit that took mm-hmm. off, and then the and then um, built, 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 and grew, and platinum album and whatnot. The second movie had a huge opening. The uh, the uh, soundtrack album debuted at number one. It wasn't all acapella, which is mm-hmm. why Pentatonix gets the credit of having the first ever number one. But the, the it, it ended up being the highest grossing musical comedy movie of all time. Wow, that bigger than everything. School of Rock, all those mm-hmm. other huge movies. And uh, so, yeah, Pitch Perfect 3 is already, the script's getting written, Kay Cannon's working on it, and Elizabeth Banks was just announced as returning as director, um, Rebel Wilson's coming back to be Fat Amy, and a Kendrick's already signed on, Britney Snow, so like it, you know, the, the gang's getting all back together, and, uh, but the, the great thing is that the production team, everybody's really smart about this movie, rather than just trying to burn it out and make as many movies as they can, mm-hmm. they're taking their time, couple years between each one, let's do it right, let's sure. make it funny, and, and keep keep the brand going in a really positive way. Well, you know what? You said a couple of things, and I, I want to jump into something that of course. is a little <laughs> controversial. But Come bec- off any time, by the way. I talk, talk, talk. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, you're, you're schooling me. You know, I've been in this world forever as well, so it's nice to hear somebody who who not only has the experience, but a lot of the, the, uh, the data to support all of what's going on. So it, it's really, really cool, man. Oh. That's why I wanted to have you on. And, and we've been trying to do this for a while, and so he graciously said, I can do it this this week. And I was like, well, we got to have you, man. Whole show. So mm-hmm. Well, it works that great. Pentatonix number one right now. I mean, it's it's the topic to cover this week. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. So let's go back for a minute. Because sure. when you mentioned, you know, you're kind of the, the palm olive thing. You know, yeah. you're soaking in it. The acapella world has always been, and this is, um, this is coming from me. So yeah. I want to know how you feel about it. Because I've always yeah. likened... Uh, acapella singing and the, the music genre to almost like the Star Trek convention kind of thing. <laughs> Where, in a way... <laughs> no, think I about it. it. Think about it, though. I love it. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because we I got you. are so insular and we, we, we know this thing so well and sometimes the joke is on us. You know, so yeah, everybody totally. else outside of that, for the most part, is kind of like... Uh yeah, acapella, yeah, and they may enjoy it. Don't get me yeah. wrong; they may enjoy it, and I and I know the Pitch Perfect movies are example of that and everything. But at the same time, and I'm I'm going towards something. I had seen the uh, the uh, New York Times review, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. and I saw some of the responses to that. 
But in my mind, I completely understood it. It doesn't mean that I agreed with it. But sometimes you have to step back. And it's yeah, so yeah, hard yeah. to step back when you're in the midst of it. Oh, do, oh, I'm with you on that. So, um, well, here, let me let me flip it on you a little bit. Because okay. I, I agree with everything you're saying. Yes, like total o- hardcore acapella fans can be like Trekkies. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have our tight little community. But let's go back in time. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to before there was recorded music. If you wanted music, you had to make it. Yes. And in fact, the earliest music was acapella. All of our ancestors at the end of the day, at the end of you know farming, at the end of the hunt, whatever, they get together around the campfire and they would sing. You go back 100 years, everybody sang. You wanted music. You would go out Christmas caroling if you wanted Christmas songs. You'd, you'd stand around the piano or you'd, just, you'd, you'd get there in the barber shop together and you'd harmonize and you'd make music. This is what has happened through all of human history and prehistory in every culture around the world. Yes. What has happened recently? Recorded music took away the need for people to learn how to sing and play instruments and all that kind of stuff, so it stole that away. I think in Western culture particularly, we have this this idea of like, you're the expert, you go do that, everybody else, you know, stop. So everybody sings in kindergarten, everybody sings in first grade, and then by third grade, it's like, you're a good artist, you draw, you're a good singer, you sing, and you, Johnny, you don't sing so much, don't take choir anymore. Mm. Plus choral music and, and music in general getting eviscerated in the schools all around the country and in, in you know, other countries as well. And then you add to that, the last zinger is you, you get the American idols up there where um, because of the way it's set up with the producers and, and kind of lying to these people until they get in front of the, the panel, you set these people up to be made fun of. And then mm. all of America makes fun of them. But what it's sending is this message to all of us that there are a few people that are good singers and everybody else shouldn't sing. And this is a tragedy because we have taken away from people one of our most fundamental gifts, the gift of song. Yes. We're like whales. We're like songbirds. We're like crickets. It is in our DNA that we must sing. It's part of our mating rituals. It's part of, it's part of who we are and what we love to do, which is why people sing in the shower. They sing in the car. They you know, so occasionally go out with, the, with their uh, office workers and go sing some karaoke. But for the most part, most people don't have that joy of singing. So my life's work to spread harmony through harmony is to try to right that wrong, try to tip the scales back. And to get to your point about pentatonics, yeah, absolutely pentatonics isn't for everybody. Pentatonics right now is trying to be the first a cappella group in over 20 years to have a song on the radio, a Mm -hmm. pop hit. Mm -hmm. And the way they're doing that is going with that really heavily tuned, you know, one direction pop sound, the, the, the tight, bright vocals. But that's not for everybody. When I'm cooking dinner, I listen to Bossa Nova. You know what I mean? I, I like I like Coltrane and Giant Steps. Like so, I like listening to to vocal jazz and and I listen to classical music sometime. And and there's every kind of music for every kind of person. And what's happening now in acapella is you're getting every kind of acapella for every kind of person. You got Home Free. They just had the number four country album in the in the country mm. on the Billboard charts. Mm-hmm. So they're blowing up in the country world. Straight No Chaser, the other group that was reviewed in that. Those guys are 30-something, so they're appealing to more of the PBS and the Michael Bublé cl- crowd with their own sound, and their own style and personality. You guys are still out there killing it on the road all over the place. I mean, come on, take six. You guys are still absolutely vital to what's going on. And, um, and so the, the summation of all of that, of that is it's possible that some authors are putting a little too much weight on pentatonics as though they're the one thing that's going on. But there's plenty of different food at the, at the salad bar, or the smorgasbord, as it were. Yes. And that's, I love the way you just said all of that, because it's all very true. And, you know, I like to play devil's advocate. Oh, so, bring it. So, in a way, because pentatonics right now is the brightest shining object out there. Oh, of course. That's the thing that they're grasping a hold of. And so they think, they think that the movement is only pentatonics. But you're right, it's everything. And it's always been everything. You know, it's always oh. been every. But I think pentatonics is brilliant at what it is they're doing oh yeah you know absolutely i think that as you said you know singing uh with the the bright vocals and doing the one direction kind of thing and having um the technology in place so that when you have that song come on on the radio it doesn't shift all that much sonically from what it is they're doing to anything else that's on the radio that's right. And, and and that's those are production choices and mm-hmm. and those guys are smart. They worked so hard with professional pop songwriters. They got Jason Derulo in the studio mm-hmm. and they had Rihanna's vocal coach in there working with them to get the best possible takes. But they were trying to straddle this almost impossible divide between their core a cappella fans mm-hmm. who want complex harmonies and they want 
the most recent cover tunes in all these interesting ways. And people who listen to pop music on the radio who want a nice hook, they want bright, happy vocals, they want a sound that's very modern. And I think they found a place that, that is going to be the, the meeting point, mm -hmm. and possibly the apex of both of those things. But there's no way it's going to please everybody. You can't. I mean, Taylor Swift has the biggest album in the past you know, year by far. But you go down the street, you'll find more people who don't like her than like her. That's sure, music. That's sure. that's art. That's the way it is. So it's all you know. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring them up and, and hear your perspective on yeah. all of it. Oh, and yeah. I, I think it's amazing. Um, in you know the people that I know who enjoy so many different facets of this genre, you know, uh, because my side is is a, is a is heavily jazz influenced. Oh yeah, you know a lot of swing and all of that. So this is fairly new to even me, you know, to yeah. to listen to Pentatonix or listen to Home Free or Straight No Chaser or even Committed or uh, or Naturally Seven. We're all so very different in what it That's is right. we do, and I think that you know, as we both have been saying, people who are less initiated to what this is think it's all the same. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and because um, media is overwhelming, like there's so much information out there and so many viral videos and so many groups, so many sounds, so many bands, so many books, there are 4,000 books published each day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So many movies being made in television shows and whatever, that people just are inundated. There's too much information. So it's hard to punch through to the really, the masses and have something really click. So when something like Pentatonix does, you're absolutely right. It becomes the beacon. It becomes the light on the hill. It becomes the one touchstone for everybody to say like, oh, acapella, like Pentatonix. And, uh, right. but the, this individual doesn't define the whole right. in any style of music. And so, so it's great that they're out there. It's great that they're doing that thing. And hopefully when people find them, then they start to dig a little deeper and they find all these other groups. There are hundreds of groups out there. Absolutely. Phenomenal music. Absolutely. But you, you know, the thing that has always rung true as far as the music business is concerned from the very beginning to this very moment is you have to strive for excellence. It's not about oh. can we make a hit? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we fool the people? No, especially now, as you were just saying, there's so much out there that the only way to to get people's ears and get their their you know eyeballs on what it is you're doing is to rise above all that with excellent work. And when I say excellent, I mean something that is uniquely you and authentically you. You know, so yeah. I think that that's going to be the the thing that really puts acapella on the map where it should be is. For obviously, you know, there are going to be some groups that continue doing covers and continue doing what we've heard for the last few years, um, kind of making the joke in and of itself, you know, and that's fine. But I think original songs that are incredible yep. with incredible production and yep. incredible uh, vocals is what's going to really win at the end of the day. There's no question. and That's true in any art form. And uh, I mean, there, and there are a lot of people who do and make great, phenomenal music, but for whatever reason, they're just not able to punch through the many layers mm -hmm. of um, media to get out there so that enough people find them and know them and love them. Uh, and it's nice that acapella is finally getting back into people's minds and, and ears and hearts. Uh, and yeah, that's you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, and it's not easy to do, you know, and, and it, it's not supposed oh. to be easy. <laughs> I tell people no, all no, the time, no. especially now, I don't think everybody, just because you have a computer uh, or music software, that doesn't make you a recording artist. It doesn't make you a singer. It doesn't make you an artist. You can try, you know, but there's so much stuff out there that you have to really, really strive to be excellent. And then word of mouth and everything else takes over. And I think there are so many different ways now to, to be heard. And you better try to get to all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, 20 years ago, back when recording studios were brick and mortar, and, and you, you had to really spend money mm -hmm. to go into a studio and make an album. It took time. I think people were able to spend more time on their craft. But then it was much harder for them to get that music in front of people, so they had to go through the gatekeepers of the record labels. Yes. They had to get out there and tour and build a following and all that. So it was... 
it, back in those days, it was almost like you really had to woodshed and, and get your sound together, and then you could build up your business and get known. Oh, but, now wait, it's but wait a minute. Let me, let me, wait, let me stop you, though. Don't you think that in the grand scheme of things, you should be doing that anyway, even these days? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. That's, that's a, a bit of what happens now mm-hmm. is so many people are able to just shoot a video themselves mm-hmm. and throw it up online that the signal-to-noise ratio yes. <laughs> is overwhelming, which is why it's hard for a group to get popular just by putting videos up because, I mean, if there are 4,000 books published each day, there are probably 100,000 videos uploaded each sure. day. Too. Maybe a million. I don't know the numbers, but it's it's absolutely overwhelming, which is why it's all the more impressive that Pentatonix, as soon as they were off the sing-off, I mean, they were basically dropped by their label the next day. Mm-hmm. So, and I told those guys, it's like the next morning when they woke up, I was like, congratulations, guys. I'm so glad you won. Don't stop running. Don't yes. wait for punishment. Don't wait for the label. Don't wait for anybody. You go out there and you keep making music every single day. And they are smart and they are hardworking. And that's what they did. And their earliest videos, you go out there, you see they put a microphone in front of themselves. They just stuck it right there. Yeah. And they sang a tune. And people started clicking and forwarding it like, ooh, that's really nice. And it, and it bubbled out from the acapella community mm-hmm. out into the general public. And then, of course, Christmas music makes things even bigger. And um, they were able to get through on the on combined basis, as it always has been, of talent and hard work. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they've been feeding their fans from day one. That is key now because, as we're both saying, and you're saying a lot more eloquently than I am, is that that there's so much stuff out there that if you don't feed your fans, they will go somewhere else. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And it's not even like they're they're hungry and uh, and so then they have to go looking for more. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically like we're all having food shoved in our yes, faces right. perpetually. <laughs> I mean, you can't go. There's not an elevator you can step into, a grocery store you walk into, a movie, a television show, a trailer. Everywhere you go, there's music. Yes. Some of it's old, some of it's new, some of it's repurposed, some of it's remixed. Um, but the bottom line is you're surrounded by it at all times, so much so that you have more than you possibly need. So it's really tough for something new and fresh to cut through all of that and mm-hmm. become something that is uh, is desired, we're 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 gluttonous. We are swelling from yes. how much music we have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this: Are you currently uh, still singing? Are you are you singing with your group or a group or what's going on well, with you? Well, I, I just earlier this year had to hand in my pitch pipe, hang out my pitch pipe, as I like to say, with the house what? jacks because I'm too busy. Mm-hmm. I know, and and I and I feel your point. When you're talking about changing the you know sound and getting cutting through all of it. 20 years ago when we were signed to Warner Brothers and the house checks were doing all original music. Mm-hmm. We were the first group with a, with a vocal percussionist in the group and full time and, and we had a sound and they wanted to launch us and, and they had the single picked out and they spent three years and they were finally like, we don't know how to market this. Mm. People have to see you before they hear you but there was no way to get us on television. There was no YouTube. There was no whatever. So in the end, it, it didn't end up working out which is why now is the time for acapella to be able to flip that out there. Sure. But, but I'm not done singing myself. Um, um, I've got a standing annual concert at Carnegie Hall each spring, and um, I get invited to do things. I was recently on the stage last week with uh, Richard Cheese here at Lounge Palooza oh, in San nice. Francisco. Okay, and uh, Aqua West was here mm-hmm. last weekend. So there's, there's still your, people are still going to be sick of me on stage. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's just oh, and then um, I've got a new show on Lifetime coming out uh, in January called Pitch Slap. They just named it. And uh, I'm working with a uh, high school a cappella group as, as their coach. And, and I've got kind of the Bad News Bears, um, 21 members of this group. And they're not even a class. They're like an after school, you know, club, as it were. Mm-hmm. And there are competitions each week. But this is the first a cappella show. Rather than to focus on the competition or to focus on just the music or storyline or whatever, it's, it's the behind the scenes. It's how do you run a rehearsal. It's how do you bring a song from concept to life on stage. Very, and, uh, very so nice. that's fun. So, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still out there, but, um, well, you're out the there, you're out there everywhere. That's yeah. what's going on with you. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> man. You, I mean, no, I'm the next time I'm going to see you is going to be like in Prague or something. I mean, last time I was in Tasmania. Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But that's, what's wonderful about this business with that we're in. We can, we can meet okay. around the world and, and um, do our thing and, and very blessed in doing so. Absolutely. And and it's interesting because I'm getting quite an education today uh, from you. So I, again, I'm very very excited to have you. And, it's my pleasure. And man, you know your craft so well. Um, well, so, you, I don't know if you remember 
but uh, one of your guys were just after your album came out. One of your first uh, tours in that first year was to Tufts University, and I was an undergrad there, and I was running around getting you guys bottles of water and stuff, and overhearing what you were saying. And I remember afterwards, the audience, you guys were still, it was so new for you. You were like, we can't believe it. It's like this every night. The place is packed. All these people are coming in. And I remember thinking like, wow, these guys are so humble and they're so generous with their time. This is what I want to do with my life. Were we so nice you, to you? You are personally one of the reasons I am doing what I'm doing oh, right now. Man. Well, oh, man. Thank true. you. It's absolutely true. Absolutely. Thank you. You make a, an old man feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you're only a few years older than me. Today, I know, right? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm an old man, too. I didn't want to bust you. I was like, wait a minute. We're, we're fairly close to the same age. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You bust me all you want. That's absolutely right. You uh, you guys agree, just recently graduated, and uh, and we're out there on the road. Yeah, mm. yeah. Our first album, I was 25, going on 26, I think. And that mm. was 1988. So yeah, it was. I think I do remember that particular gig. I don't remember you, although, um, although I'm I'm hoping we were nice to you. You are supremely nice to everybody. I know, absolutely, absolutely, totally. But you can't. I mean, when you're on the road like that and you meet so many people afterwards and whatever, like no, 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 there's no reason for you to have remembered. (laughs) Just a just a happy little lanky guy running and getting you guys blotter and uh, trying to soak up as much knowledge as I could. Not, not only about what you did on stage, mm-hmm. which was effortless and brilliant, um, but also how you were behind the scenes. Oh, and you know what I do remember? What's that? I remember you had a sore throat that night. Oh, I remember that because, uh, because I was hearing a couple of the chord voicings get revoiced or you were not going up for like the uh, super high notes of the end uh-huh. of get away Jordan and things mm-hmm. like this. And I, and I'm a musician. Mm hmm and was also at the New England Conservatory of Music at the same time and did all kinds of ear training. So I'm like listening and hearing these, re- these revoiced chords and stuff like that. And then afterwards I'm wondering and I overhear you saying to somebody else like, yeah, I got this sore throat. Hopefully my concert was well. And you sounded fantastic, but that also taught me as a performer, you never show your hand. Oh. You, ne- you always go up there, you give 100% and whatever it takes, you go. You well, I, I could give so you so many stories. Else that you were down. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I'm sure you have stories as well. I mean, Especially oh, yeah. in an acapella group of even just two people, you know, you just never know uh, if you're 100. percent But the audience expects 100. percent So you have to oh, do yeah. what you have to do. So with six guys on stage, and uh, for 99 percent of our arrangements, um, we're not doubling it all. Every every oh. person's part is extremely important. So yeah, <laughs> if you have to yeah. rehire, you those re-harm. Were the early days. I mean, you guys were singing first album you didn't have a huge repertoire it's not like we're like right. oh well we'll take the songs where i get to take it easy no i mean right. it was clear like you had that you were doing two-thirds of the album and a couple other tunes and no 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 you you worked it that night i was impressed well thank you thank you thank you this yeah. is the, the mutual admiration society day <laughs> <laughs> so tell me okay we've talked a lot about music we've talked about all of this stuff. what else do you do what what are other passions of deke sheriff well uh Besides acapella, I mean, writing a third book right now about acapella mm-hmm. and, and publishing more music and, and trying to get out there. And, and of course, Pitch Perfect 3 is going to roll around. Mm-hmm. But my own personal passions, mm-hmm. uh, I do all the cooking at home. I love cooking. Oh, okay. I love to read so people can follow me, not just on Twitter and Instagram, and Facebook and all that stuff, but uh, follow me in, in Goodreads because I probably read 75 books this year already, something wow. like that. Wow. And um, I love walking. That's my exercise. I hate the gym. Uh, but when oh, you live Dave, in a city we, like we, San we Francisco, can't, we can't be friends. You hate the gym? What? <laughs> Come on, man. Come well, on. I mean, I don't know if you could tell from my non-existent muscles here. <laughs> uh, no, for me, I love walking okay. and uh, you know just interacting with people and and going places. And my wife likes to joke. I'm like one of those old Parisian women who goes to the bakery to get the bread, and you go to the fish market to get the fish and stuff. But that's what San Francisco's like, you know. You, yes. You get out there and you get to know the people in the different stores, and it feels. Um, Feels like a small town, even though it's a, uh, it's a big city. Absolutely. And uh, I got two kids and a lovely wife, and I like being, um, I like being a dad and a husband, and um, yeah, it's like that. Very cool. Well, you have a, you have a glow about you, man, and and a way about you that is very infectious in in the best of ways. So I, I wish you well in all of your endeavors, and we'll be following you and 
reaching out to you and trying to get, you know, cameos and whatever the heck you're doing and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff, man. I and, appreciate uh, it. Well, you know, uh, if there's a, a spot in the script for, for a group like yours or you or whatever, in Pitch Perfect 3, I... I, I will get on the phone immediately and call you. That's in Pitch Perfect too. It was great to be able to pull in the Philharmonic and yes. Harmonics and different mm -hmm. members from uh, different groups in the sing off of that sure. big world acapella scene at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Pen Masala because Liz Banks was all about. She said like I want as many real groups and people as uh, as we can get. I was like, all right, here we go. I'll sure, get back well, to I'm, putting, I'm putting it out there right now. You know, if there's a, if the there's dog. a way, or you know. We we'll get the the old cats up in there. We'll do some whatever you need. <laughs> That's what it's all about. The beautiful thing is, I might not talk to you or run into you on the road for two years, mm -hmm. but we're still family. Yes, and that's the way it is with everybody in acapella. You just pick up where you left off. Like, oh, what have you guys been up to? And I heard about this, and I love the new album, and blah blah blah. And tell me about that place. And you said you had the story for me, and it's like that. Yes. that's the great thing about about acapella. There's not enough money in it for you know, all the like the jerks and the hawks and all those like skeezy music type people mm -hmm. to really dig their teeth and their claws into it. And you can't be in an acapella group unless you're a good person, unless you play well with others, unless Absolutely. you understand how to create harmony. Yes. So that's, I think our community is one of the nicest, most positive, yeah. supportive, mm -hmm. like I love everybody. It's, in it. it's all just, about team. It's all yeah, about team. About team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's great. So wherever you go, whenever it's an acapella concert, whoever you meet after the show, Maybe they're a super popular group. Maybe there's some new, young, up-and-coming people. But you know they're going to be good people. Very cool. That's why I love this world. Yes. And I can tell you love it. I'm sure everybody who's listening to you and, and seeing you can tell that you truly love this world. Tell everybody how they can reach you on social media, Deke. Well, th the thing is my name, Deke Sharon, D-E-K-E, -E, last name S-H-A-R-O-N, like the female first name. That's pretty much mine everywhere. So you okay. find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and periscope and i don't know what i left out all their various social media and you can find me at deke just and, google uh, just google deke sharon you can find him anywhere everywhere you can find me anywhere and the most important thing to know is if you're listening to this and you want to sing and you're not in a group you contact me because i will help you find a group and if you want to start a new group i will give you free arrangements and i will give you all kinds of different information go to acapella.how it's a whole website filled with free information about how to get better at singing starting a group anything putting on a concert that's my life's work, spreading harmony through harmony. Any way I can help anybody out there, you just contact me. I will help you. Amazing. I will get you the help great. you need. That is great. Well, it's been a wonderful, wonderful pleasure having you, man. You've been here Thanks, for bro. the whole time. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed. And I'm, I'm usually a very, very laid back cat. So I'm very <laughs> happy that this, this came together. So thank you so much, Deke. And, it's my uh, honor. Thank you for helping me. Stay fun, yeah, absolutely. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Wow, man! So John. giving. I love that. Good stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, he's he's preaching the gospel of right. acapella. No, and, he really is, and and in a way that and walking the talk, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know that he loves it, he lives it, mm -hmm. and he shares it. Yeah, you know. I think what's so important about acapella music is that it, you know, everyone has a specific role, mm -hmm. and everyone is valued for that role. Yes. You know, and I think that's why everyone is so appreciated and 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 loved in in that community because they yeah. realize everybody's important. And, and and like you said, you can't really be a jerk mm -hmm. and be in a group in acapella. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You have to be put out so, at some point <laughs> because you're you're holding up part of the house. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you let that down, now yeah. the foundation is jacked up exactly. and the whole thing comes crumbling down. Yeah. So yeah, John, I'm gonna have to put you out the group, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And like Deke said, you know, if if you want to sing, mm -hmm. you want to be in a group, you know, check him out. He can help you. And uh, yeah, let's just get everybody singing, man. And that's rare to have someone, you know, on his caliber to offer such assistance like that. I mean, well, that's yeah, that's it, great. It is, but you know what? There are there are people like that throughout this industry. Mm -hmm. Quincy Jones is that way. Okay, that's how you can be in this industry mm -hmm. for 50, 60 years. Yeah, by giving. But yeah, by paying it forward, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. then it shows what your character is like, and and people gravitate towards mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so, I read that on his website. I was like, is he really putting that offer out there? <laughs> yeah. That's, and I was like, that's wild. That's, that's great. great. No, it is. And a lot of people in the chat room loved him. And they were, you know, commenting throughout um, as you were 
progressing in the conversation, a lot of the answers were being revealed. So, yes. you know, um, very cool. Yeah. And and he's he's such a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of questions and stuff, and he was just waxing poetically. Oh, yeah. I was like, I, I'm just going to sit here and listen. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Pitch Perfect 3, and I yes. would love to see you guys in that. That would be well, great. Well, John, anytime you put something out there into the it, universe, it happens, it happens it happen. brother. All That's right. right. <laughs> That's right, right ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. Very, very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been hanging out with Deke Sharon today, uh, the father of contemporary a cappella music. And um, so we've had a wonderful, wonderful mm-hmm. time. And... Um, and your mom made it. She's, My mom did. Yeah, she, she texted me uh, just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Said that she made it. Yes. So <laughs> I hope I hope you checked out the show, mom. If not, you can check it out in the archives, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll put this up very soon for those of you who couldn't uh, check it out live. Mm-hmm. YouTube, so. iTunes, Stitcher, and a new one called Spreaker now. S- Spreaker. Yeah, like speaker. Spreaker. Spreaker. Okay. Spreaker. All yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And see, I was so busy and 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 doing whatever I was doing that I couldn't set up my phone to periscope it while we were oh, doing it because I had I meant it. to do that but I was getting all these texts as well so yeah that r- wouldn't have really worked out yeah so thank you so much you've been hanging out with Claude McKnight we talked about all manner of stuff with Mr. Deke Sharon mm-hmm. we talked about growing anomalies I, had, I just had to say that <laughs> oh, at, the, Lord. at the beginning of the show John <laughs> and at the end of the show and uh, oh wow <laughs> so we'll see you again uh, next week thank you so much God bless You've been hanging out.